happy Thanksgiving from my family to yours for everybody that's celebrating Thanksgiving. But even if you're not celebrating Thanksgiving, I'm not. I guess my boyfriend is going to cook a turkey. But that's about the extent of it. Today, I am very thankful for this response I got. Let me read it to you. Hey, just a quick shout out to your Logic Pro crash course. Brilliant stuff. I got so excited about learning all the tools that I had to stop and take a break. Was literally going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, while going through the pages setting up preferred settings. Because it's Thanksgiving, I'm going to share with you that chapter. And by the way, you guys don't need to have an iPad to use this crash course. You can just use it in a PDF, you can use it on your phone, you can use, you can print it out, whatever you want. If you go to the table of contents and then go to setting up my preferred settings, section one, and you just click on it, bam, it takes you right to that chapter. And then if you click on the title, you open it up, you log into your account, and then you could watch a video showing you how to do it if you're not sure about it in the book. I'm just gonna show you the whole chapter in this video right now. And then if you like it, you can consider buying the whole book. And today I'm having a huge, 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 huge sale for Black Friday, and I'll have it all linked down below. Number one, turn on MIDI Chase. This is something that really irked me. If I jump into the DAW and I record in a chord progression, Okay, cool. You see what happened when I tried to play in the middle of a chord? No sound! I have to wait all the way until the next chord for the sound to come out, which is very annoying. So, how to fix that, which is what it says right here. Option P, to open up project settings. Then you go to MIDI, go to Chase, go to Notes, click this, and now watch what happens. Bam! Their sound. The next one is automatically adjust beats and bars. So if you ever pull out a sample and it doesn't quite line up, something that you can do is go Option P to open up project settings, then go over to Smart Tempo, then set imported files to on and align bars and beats. So now when you pull in a sample from any anywhere, any BPM, any beat, it's going to automatically put it on the right spot. Okay, so let me show you. I'm gonna go into Splice, and now let me find a sample in a different BPM. So let's see, Drum Groove. Let me download this one. This one's at 100 BPM. My track is at 120. And now if I drag it in, it automatically synced it up to 120. So that's super useful. The next one, automatically colorize takes. So this is really helpful for multiple reasons. Like if you're doing vocal comps and you're having like multiple comps happening and you want it to colorize those, you can do um, go to option P again, recording, and I already have this selected, but you might not have it selected, so you do automatically colorize takes. So now, if I were to record over this. Oh, so you can see, right? Take one is in red, and take two is in yellow. If for some reason this isn't, you can't check this box, it's because of a different setting you have. If you press command comma, it will open up um, these just general settings. And if you have this set to the region color, which is like the color over here, and this color the same, so if you have it as a track color, you won't be able to have automatically colorized takes. So you have to make sure that this is as individual, okay? Which leads me to my next one, which is gonna be later, but since we're here, um, another thing in the book is that you can go to settings, which is command comma, go over to track color and select it to auto assign 96 colors. So now if I add like a bunch of tracks or a new track, it's going to automatically color code them for me. See? So lots of different colors, different colors. So that's really helpful. Instead of all of the MIDI, I think being 
green and all of the audio being blue. Next setting is a simple one. All you have to do is press option P, go to audio, go to general, and this is just kind of where you can change the sample rate if you want to have it set to 44.1 or 48. So if you go over here, you can see that my tools up here have three tools, right? So I can access this with the right mouse click. So if you bought one of these, I think this one's just maybe like 50 bucks on Amazon. And I like to set it to the scissor tool. So now I can just right click and just like chop, 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 chop. So that's really helpful. And then to access this one, now you just have to hold down command and now you can access it with that one. And then obviously this one is just the main clicker. So that's, oh, so to order to get this third tool, what you gotta do is press command comma to open up settings. Then you go to general, then you go to editing. And then here, right mouse click is assignable to a tool, right? So just make sure, and this is, and if you want to change it, you can change it to any of these other ones, but I like, is it signable to a tool? And while we're here, another thing that I like checked off is this fade tool click zones, right? I have that in this book, the next tip. And this is really cool because now when I want to just add a fade, all I have to do, so if this is an audio track, it won't work if it's like comped like this. So you just have to flatten and merge. So I'm just gonna flatten and merge it. And look, now if I hover over the top, I can add a fade out or a fade in just by hovering top corner. And another really cool thing is if you press control click or right click, you can have it slow down. So this is what it'll sound like. Which is cool. And then the other way you can have it speed up. So this is what this will sound like. Pretty cool, right? Oh, this one is really, really cool. So if you press command comma, and then you go to recording, and now over here, you could decide how you want your overlapping recordings to react, right? So you can have them merge. So basically, um, if you record over this MIDI right now, I have it set to merge. So basically, it'll just put the notes right on top of it. So for instance, if I were to just record right on top of here, watch what'll happen. Basically, it just merged the notes right on top, right? If I selected Create Take Folder, this is what'll happen. Now they're in separate take folders, which is really cool. Let's say I'm just doodling around. Whatever, messing around and now I'm like, oh, I liked one of those, but I can't remember which one I liked and I can't remember what I did and I wasn't recording, ah! What you can do is you can press Shift R and because we had it take to separate take folders, check it out, they're each in a separate take folder and you could decide which one you liked, which variation you didn't like. You can even unpack these, unpack to track alternatives or you can unpack to three separate tracks, pretty cool. Okay, so let me show you the track alternatives, actually. So you can go here, unpack to track alternatives, and you can just see them here. To access that, all you gotta do, which is in this book, is press option T, and you can see all of these options here. You can add these buttons, you could add additional names, you can add color bars, which is what I was showing you earlier. You can add groove track, where you can select a star, this is the main groove track, and then you can have all the tracks align with that main groove. So that's really cool. And that's just option T. And you could figure out which settings you want. So if you like to have track alternatives here, this is where that would live. So I can say new, and then I could record a whole separate part right there. And they'll all just live right in these track alternatives, which is really helpful. This is a really big chapter. I was trying to make like a quick video, but now I'm giving you guys all the juice. Okay. So another one that is really, really cool is, okay, let me record in some piano really fast. If you double click here, and then you go to view, 
and then you select note labels. Now you can see the, the note labels right on the MIDI notes. So that is really helpful. I can see right here that we're in E3, so we're in E, e note in the third octave, C3, A2, so that's really helpful. So that's where you can see the note labels on the MIDI notes in the piano roll. There's so much in here. I was trying to give you guys a quick video. Okay, I'm gonna show you two more in the book and then if you like it and you're impressed, you'll have to get, you'll just have to get the book. But look, there is actually so much. And one of my favorite things is that if you click at the bottom of any page, back to the top, it'll take you right back to the table of contents. Oh, and also I should tell you that you get free updates. So anytime Logic updates, I update the book and I will send it to you guys for free. Just a one-time purchase. And now you're gonna get a huge deal because of Black Friday. Anyways, okay, let me show you a couple more. Okay, so another really cool thing is that you can have the metronome click only when recording. And this is something that I think is really cool because I don't want to hear it all the time. I don't want to hear it during playback. Like if I turn it on and off right now and I want to hear it for recording, I'm also going to hear it for playback, which is really annoying, right? So what you can do is you control click on here, uncheck simple mode, and then control click again and select click while recording. And now when I play back, no metronome, but if I hit record, we'll hear the metronome. So that's really helpful. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more, because this one is so, oh, I get so excited by all of these. I'm gonna show you two more. It's a big chapter. Okay, so two more that I think is really amazing. So if you go to mix, and then you make sure this is selected, auto select automation parameter. I always forget how to say parameter. Parameter or parameter? Anyways, parameter in read mode, but make sure it's checked off. Okay, so now, if I want to automate something here, right? So let's open up this thing. And now I wanna automate this pad, right? So I'm gonna press A, and I don't wanna automate the volume, I wanna automate this pad, watch. Boom, did you check it out? Whatever I touched, put it right into the automation box, which is really helpful. So now, if I, ooh, I'll show you guys an extra bonus, if I press, T, P, get my pencil tool out. I can draw in an automation, check it out. Pretty cool. All right, I really hope this was helpful. Um, like I said, the book is available. Um, it's a crash course and book, and I worked really hard on this, and I really hope it helps you. And if you did buy it and you enjoy it, it really is helpful to send me a review or feedback. Um, thank you all for being here. I'm so grateful for you. I hope you all have amazing Thanksgiving. I hope these tips helps. I hope my channel helps, and I'll see you next time.